We've got the all new Chevrolet Trax. This one's a shocker. Oh, you know what we're doing, Andrea? Ooh. We're making tracks. Oh, there's that forward collision <laughs> warning. <laughs> it's a bit aggressive. Yeah. All right, so we what's under the hood the of this thing? A 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder. It's got a six speed automatic transmission with 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. This is a front wheel drive model only. So this is a budget friendly city runaround for the most part. Mm -hmm. What do you get? What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with an 8-inch touchscreen, a 3.5-inch driver display, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, manual heated cloth front seats, a four-speaker audio system, manual climate control, active noise cancellation, a manual liftgate, 17-inch steel wheels, and Chevrolet safety assist. In the U.S., heated front seats are not standard, but are available in both the LS and LT packages. One thing I'm missing, Andrea, there's mm -hmm. no sport button. No. But there is another button. What else can we put it in? Got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, a couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's up behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And the links are below the like button. So this is Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. They also have the Buick division and they have a cousin to this called Invista. Mm -hmm. Same platform, same engine, basically turned into a Buick. I put the card up here. Watch that. It's great. Yeah, really like, good. Like so good. Love the exterior design of the Invista. Mm -hmm. Look sharp. And I just love the price point. That is what gets me. And then the technology that's in here. There are some luxury brands that don't offer standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that is pretty great. Now, before we hear any negativity about it being a 1.2 liter, a three cylinder turbocharged engine and the low horsepower, the torque number is very good. 162 pound feet of torque. This is going to get you where you need to go. Okay, we drive 100 different cars a year. Yeah. And we're pretty honest. I think you get that from us. Yeah. If we said this drove like a hot turd, we'd tell you that. <laughs> it does not. It's very good. This is as surprising. All I have to say to you is, Try it, you'll be surprised. I'm impressed with how quiet the cabin is. I mean, Chevrolet really worked on this noise insulation of the tracks. We saw it with the Invista as well. The steering feel is really nice. It's not too light, which typically in the subcompact class, a lot of the vehicles have very light steering. Well, the Trailblazer, when we first got it, it's been out for a few years now, um, we found that the power steering was over boosted. Maybe yeah. they washed your video video, Andrea, and said, well, Detrea likes it a little heavier. Mm -hmm. The weight of the steering wheel is not overly boosted at all. No, and it's really quite fun to drive. We've driven it in the city on the highway. The fuel economy combined that we got was 7.9 liters per 100 kilometers, 30 miles per gallon. You know, that's right in that EPA target that will have those official numbers coming up a little bit later on. And you know what, Zach, in the city, the power is sufficient. When you get it on the highway and you're cruising along, no problem. Of course, when you're in slower traffic and you wanna get away from a vehicle and make that quick pass, it is going to take a little bit longer. This is not a powerhouse. This is a budget friendly commuter vehicle and it does all that very well. And one of the reasons I feel that you're getting that responsiveness is because it comes with an automatic transmission. There's no CVT. Yeah. Now granted, it's only a six speed, but it does a good job getting the most, keeping the vehicle in the right torque range. Yeah. One thing we forgot to mention, Andrea, mm. this along with the Invista is made in Korea. Yes. Okay, so we always talk about Hyundai and Kia. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's a different company. Yeah. General Motors owned Daewoo. They changed it into a GM division over there in Korea. This comes from Korea. Yeah. And and I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. I really like the exterior design of this. It really has a sporty vibe to it. It gets 7.3 inches of ground clearance. And this Trax is 11 inches longer and two inches wider than the previous model. You'll certainly see it in rear seat legroom, an extra three inches. 
Okay, so we hear the term crossover all the time. Mm -hmm. This is a classic crossover. This is really a compact car replacement vehicle. Yeah. Somebody doesn't want a compact car anymore. They want a utility. Well, it's not really a sort of an upright utility. Mm -hmm. It's kind of in, but it's a crossover. That's the perfect way to describe it. So it has a long, sleek profile, yeah. similar to a jacked up sedan that's what it is. This comes standard with LED headlamps, it's got body color door handles, standard 17 inch wheels, available 18 and 19 inch wheels, and guess what? what? It comes with a temporary spare tire. How nice is that? All right, coming up just after questions, coffee and cars, mm -hmm. great segment on its own, but we do hot topic and we're gonna get into front wheel drive, all wheel drive, will you miss it, coming up. And there's lots of different trims to choose from. We've got the active model. Chevy says it's got a more contemporary design. It has a black grille with chrome exterior surround and it comes with 18 inch black wheels. If you wanna up the sportiness, go with the RS model. The two RS, which is priced the same as this active model, has black exterior accents, 19 inch wheels, and of course you get the RS badging. Now we drove the Invista and we were impressed with it. We're in basically the top trim of this model and I can't really see much difference between the more expensive Buick version and this. I mm -hmm. would be more than happy to drive this interior around every day. In fact, the interior yeah. is it, the strongest part of the car. For sure. I mean, it's so clean and modern looking. And it's the same with the interior. You get different trim pieces and different color combinations. This active model has got yellow accents. You get the RS with red. The lower trims kind of have a little bit of blue accents with um, a silver finish to them. So um, lots to choose from, lots to go with. I think that the storage is okay in yeah, it's here. A, it's a subcompact sub utility. You gotta, you gotta look at this and just think about, we're gonna, you have to wait until we get to our vital stats yes. to go through what this thing costs. Always frame it with the price. And to have piping and, you know, stitching on the headrest, yes. you know, if you had that and it said Porsche, it would be like two grand to get that in a Porsche. <laughs> they throw that in at Chevrolet. Piping and stitching, that's going to cost <laughs> you a lot. Now, there are no rear air vents, which I know some are disappointed in, and there's no rear armrest yeah, either. Which so is a puzzle. Suck it up, Buttercup, yeah. for the price. And there's no power lift gate. You have to get the Trailblazer to get that. But yes. overall, you know, you've got automatic climate control. You've got the big screens, which are available. This yeah. is the top trim, but mm -hmm. we'll get to the price later. It's not a huge stretch. Uh, they've kept the piano black to a minimum. Yeah. Um, it's, you know what, it's actually quite similar to the Volkswagen GTI interior mm -hmm. that we're getting. The screens are at a similar angle, yeah. similar kind of vibe. They actually have more piano black than this. Mm -hmm. Now let's get into the trims. Here's the good news for us. The US and Canada, the trims are the same. Finally. Oh my goodness, how great is that? So if you just move up to the 1RS model, which is one up from the base, it adds the heated steering wheel. The LT model is really the one to get for the best value trim. It adds cloth and leather at upholstery, a six speaker audio system. You get the larger 11 inch touchscreen, an eight inch driver display, the active and two RS models add a power driver seat and leather at upholstery. Available features include a sunroof with a manual shade and a wireless charger. Now those two items are available in a package on the LT model and above. However, the 1RS model, you can add the sunroof, no wireless charger, and then that base model has no option of a sunroof or a wireless charger. All right, here's me getting in the back seat. A lot of leg room, not bad headroom, but the interesting thing is there is no armrest. And one of the greatest things for piling kids in and out, a perfectly flat floor in the back. Comparing the tracks to competitors like the Toyota Corolla Cross, it offers 41.9 inches of front row legroom, which is an inch less than the Toyota. Second row legroom at 38.7 inches is big for this class, offering over six inches more space than the Corolla Cross. 
And we've already touched on it, no power liftgate in this model. You'd have to get the Chevrolet Trailblazer to get that feature. But the cargo space is very useful and under the floor, and we already touched on it. Look at that beauty, a real spare tire. Cargo space behind the second row at 25.6 cubic feet is a little bit bigger than the Toyota. And overall cargo space at 54.1 cubic feet does fall short to the Corolla Cross by almost 13 cubic feet. Well, you want us to compare this to a lot of very strong competitors. Yeah. Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. How would you compare this to the Kia Soul? Mm. Kia Soul, we like that boxy design. I know not everyone likes the design, but it, it's spacious inside. It's part of the family of vehicles that are just front wheel drive, mm -hmm. right? But the thing about the Soul, it's a much more upright square mm. design. This is lower and sleeker. You've got utility slash car. This is a real crossover, mm -hmm. but they're in the front wheel drive camp, and that would be a good comparison. Yeah, and they offer about, yes, they offer about the same rear leg room and space space behind that second row but overall cargo space it's the kia that actually wins the other thing because is because of the height yes, it's boxy that's right the other thing is that this is a turbocharged engine the kia has a non-turbo so the thing about turbocharged is if you push this and you want to have some fun with it Boop. <laughs> the fuel economy, you know, isn't the best where it would be more consistent, let's say, in the Kia Soul. But you get all that torque, all that beautiful torque. So much fun. How does it compare to the Hyundai Kona? It's comparison time. Well, the Kona mm. just came out, right? And the, and the Kona grew a lot. Yeah. It's gotten a lot bigger mm -hmm. than the last model. And of course, all wheel drive. All wheel drive is, is a big one for, for many. Second row leg room and cargo space behind that second row. Believe it or not, they're both the same, pretty Ding much dong. the same. Overall cargo space, again, it's the Hyundai that is the winner. You got two options with the Kona. You've got a non-turbo engine doesn't have a lot of power, but then you've got that 1.6 T, which yeah, is great. Way, way, way more money than Totally. This. And this, I think that's what you've got to remember. You've always got your head, get your head around the fact of what this is and For what sure. it isn't. This is really a compact car replacement. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting like a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla, you would yeah. get something like this. The which price is, like, is incredible. Yeah, the price is incredible. So it's, it's compact car yeah. plus. So it, you really have to decide, like when you ask this, about the Kona and the Soul. Soul is more equivalent in price because it is a front wheel drive model. But if you want more, Kona offers more available features than this will offer, but you'll pay more for all Chevrolet that. Chevrolet will sell you the, the Trailblazer, Absolutely. which is very close on size and it has a power lift gate in the back and all wheel drive. So Chevrolet will sell you one of those. For a small family, which would you prefer, Kia Seltos or this one? Okay, copy and paste the answer for yeah. Kona for Seltos. The one thing about Seltos is it's, oh. there's, it's, there's way more features and value available. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe what the Seltos offers. It offers features that are in the compact class. Ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, a power driver's seat, driver's seat memory, and so on. Power lift gate. But you're going to pay more. So do you want a budget-friendly tracks? Yes. without all the bells and whistles or would you, do you want more and that's what you have to decide but you'll always pay more for that this is all about the value all about the value and now it's time for our hot topic what's this one andrea is the tracks really worth buying since it only has front wheel drive wouldn't the trailblazer be a better buy i just bought a buick encore gx all-wheel drive and i love it you know what's happened, Andrea? Mm -hmm. These car companies are now victims of their own marketing. Yes. They have marketed to you, all wheel drive is the way to go. You gotta have an SUV. It's gotta have all wheel drive. It's got all wheel drive capability. Yeah. We've heard all the ads. You don't need all of that. No. I grew up in an era, era where it was front wheel drive and rear wheel drive cars, and the winter tires were garbage compared to the technology yeah. we have today. You put on good winter tires, and you live in an urban area, you'll be just fine driving this. Look, we have a front wheel drive model that our son drives. He's a new driver. He has 
good winter tires on and he has had no issues yes i know we live in vancouver but we did get get some good snow last year um and then we've ordered another front wheel drive vehicle so obviously we have no issues with front wheel drive whatsoever i do understand but we do have other vehicles with all wheel drive and good winter tires too and that's probably the case for this it might be a this is a fantastic second car yeah and this would be a great young person buying their first car kind of car oh for sure So get some good winter tires. If you decide that you are going to get a front wheel drive model and you live in a snowy area, get some good winter tires. We really think that you'll be just fine. Okay. What we're going to do now is get into the vital stats and Mm. what we kick it off with is the pricing. This is the key part of this whole story. The pricing in the U.S., well, it's crazy good. And in Canada, the prices you're going to hear include freight, delivery, plus the $100 tax for air conditioning. That's all included. So let's get into it. Let's start with pricing. In Canada, the base trim starts at just over $24,500. And the top active and two RS trims are just over $31,000. In the U.S., the base trim is just under $20,500, and the top trims are just under $24,000. Here's the fuel economy. 8.3 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7.4 on the highway. That's 28 miles per gallon city, 32 miles per gallon highway. The warranty is three years, 60,000 kilometers, or 36,000 miles. Subcompact crossovers have exploded in popularity. We've chosen Mm -hmm. four alternatives. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Honda HRV with a two liter four cylinder, 158 horsepower, and a starting price just over $31,000. The Toyota Corolla Cross with a two liter four cylinder, 169 horsepower, and a starting price just over $29,000. The Kia Seltos with a two liter four cylinder, 147 horsepower, and a starting price just under $28,000. And the Buick version of this is called the Buick Invista with a 1.2 liter turbo three cylinder. 136 horsepower and a starting price of just under $29,000. So there are four subcompact crossovers for you to consider. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. My goodness, I love the incredible value. It's just an amazing overall package. What I would like to see is a ratchet adjustment on the passenger side for height. I don't like that everybody craps all over Chevrolet Mm -hmm. for their quality. Look up the quality studies recently. Chevrolet indexes well above the industry average. Practical, affordable, and spacious. Well done, Chevrolet. You gotta love the price. This one's a hit. 